I'm sure uh, last night you would have taken some time to uh, pray and see God. And uh, what a lovely class we had. I myself was excited uh, the way God moved. I really don't like, uh, you know, coming online and Zoom. But what to do? Uh, our, our situation demands and I feel God is God works through any kind of medium. And I praise God for this and uh, the way God took over the Bible study. And uh, I just want to tell you the, the, the definition that we learned uh, last night about faith. It is partnering with God. And tonight also, and last night also, personally for me, I'm partnering with God through the Zoom classes. <laughs> I'm partnering with God. Lord, you have to help me. You have to, uh, uh, you know, help me teach. You have to help, help oh God, to understand your word. Uh, in a sense, I'm also partnering with God. I'm, I'm talking to all of you with a lot of faith <laughs> because I can't see half of you, not even half. I can't even see, you know, 80% of you, a few people on the screen I can see. Uh, but uh, very soon when the church opens up, we can come together. I love that kind of uh, uh, classroom setup. Uh, I, I'm a teacher, basically. So that I love to see and I love to uh, you know interact. I like to hear from you. But there's a lot of restrictions on this kind of setup. But praise God. Anyways, God has a way of working through our lives. And he loves to teach us in uh, every circumstance. So let's review back what we uh, learned in last class. Uh, it is what is faith? Uh, and uh, we defined it is not just, uh, if you can put up that slide, Pastor Deepak, for me, thank you. Uh, what is faith? It is not just uh, the word faith. We are actually refining that word faith as biblical faith. What is biblical faith? Uh, because faith in our culture has different uh, connotations, different definitions. Uh, what you say faith is not what you say faith is not uh, what others understand about faith. I'm sure you had these conversations in your workplace. You had these conversations in your uh, in your home uh, with your friends. When you say faith, they understand something else. Uh, there is a there is a book that I re read. Uh, you said that they heard something. You, you said something and, uh, uh, and uh, they heard something else. So there is always, there is always uh, uh, this, this different languages, different definitions coming in play. So we have to really, we have to really redefine, uh, especially in our culture, in our situation. What do you mean by biblical faith? So last night we learned biblical faith is not blind. It is not blind faith. It is not blind faith. It is not just a leap of faith, as we say, uh, just do it like Nike's ad. No, it is, it is not blind faith. There's a lot of thinking. There's a lot of reasoning. There's a lot of experience. And then we start following Jesus. Amen. Jesus never said, very interesting, when Jesus was on the planet Earth, he never said, just believe and you will go to heaven. Yeah, we in the churches, we, that, that, that is a problem in the churches these days. Uh, we in the churches, we say just believe because that is the common language uh, that we just believe in Jesus, just have faith. But when Jesus was on the planet, he never said just believe. He said, come and follow me. I will talk about that in the next class or, the, or later class. Or repent and be baptized. There's always an action. Repent and, and, and uh, accept the kingdom of God. Come and follow me. It's always following Jesus. It, it has nothing to do with believing. Yes, there is believing. There is faith. There is a trust. In, in all those words, more important is there's action involved. There's a reasoning. That they listen to the teaching of Jesus. And they start following Jesus. So biblical faith is not a blind faith. That's what we learned uh, last class. Biblical faith is partnering with God. I love that word. Uh, maybe you can use that in your day-to-day -day, uh, prayer life. Lord, I want to partner with you. Show me how to partner with you. Uh, biblical faith is knowing who Jesus is and obeying him. That's, a, that's exactly what I said, following him. Yes, biblical right. faith is all about following Jesus. Biblical faith is trusting God with your life 
into the hands of God. That is biblical faith. That is trusting God with your life. If you can put slide two for me, Pastor Deepak, it says three words that we looked at uh, yesterday was faith, belief, and trust. And we use these words interchangeably. We use these words, have faith in God. There's nothing wrong in saying that. Have faith in Jesus. Uh, belief. Uh, believe in the Lord. Believe in God's word. There's nothing wrong in saying that. Trust in Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing wrong in saying that. But when we studied last night that, uh, the better word to use or, or, to, or, or the, the right word that gives more understanding of faith is trust. All right, because we have confusing of definitions these days. There's a lot of confusion about definitions. So trust would be most appropriate. Now, having said that, don't go and correct someone if somebody says, have faith in Jesus. No, I learned faith is not right, it is trust. Don't go and correct anyone, okay? That's my humble request. Don't have pride as you're learning more things. They can use belief, they can use faith, they can use trust. But in this Bible class, you're learning that biblical faith leans more towards trust. It is like marriage. You trust, you love, and you become one with the person that you're married. Same thing. When you come to Christ, you become one with him, following him, believing in him, putting your faith in him, and putting trust in him. So the trust is the word that we gravitate to understand what faith is. Tonight... Uh, we're going to rush quickly because we have a big chapter to uh, complete because anyone who talks about uh, faith have to touch this book of Hebrews because Hebrews chapter 11 is any preacher's dream or uh, any, uh, any person who talks about faith always starts from Hebrews 11. Have you noticed that? <laughs> I'm sure some of you are in the church for a long time and uh, you, anyone who starts talking about faith, they always land in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 and that's exactly what we're going to do now. But before we go there, you must understand the book of Hebrews starting from chapter 1 till chapter 10. Chapter 1 to chapter 10 the author, the writer of Hebrew is actually uh, telling you and me that Jesus is greater than all the other prophets. And he gives examples and he elaborates on that. He, he talks about Jesus is greater than angels. Jesus is greater than Moses. Moses is the, is the greatest prophet or the leader of the Jewish community. Jesus is greater than uh, uh, the high priest. Jesus is greater than the sanctuary or the temple that they had. Jesus is the better sacrifice. One after the other, all the components in the Old Testament where Jewish people, uh, uh, they had reverence to or they considered as, an, uh, as, a, as a model. The author of Hebrews is telling Jesus is greater than all that. And then he goes on to say that Jesus' blood is powerful. Jesus, what he did on the cross, the sacrifice is powerful. And then he comes to Hebrews chapter 10. So in the last two minutes, I finished Hebrews 1 till 10, okay? Uh, you have to just do a quick read. Sometimes instead of reading one or two chapters, sometimes you have to do a quick read. Uh, maybe tonight you can do uh, Hebrews 1 to 10. Just read quickly after your dinner or something, maybe you will go off to sleep peacefully, especially some people uh, uh, sleep peacefully or they, they go to sleep when while reading the Bible. They like to use the uh, Bible as a medicine. I won't advocate that, but you can try it anyways. If you get a good sleep by, wh while reading the Bible, please do it, <laughs> especially in this season. You need some good sleep also. Uh, so try reading Hebrews 1 to, uh, 1 to 10, one shot, and then you have another three more chapters. Hebrews 13 is the end of the book of Hebrews. 11, 12, 13. So 11, uh, before we go to 11, just look at Hebrews 10 uh, verse 19. Hebrews 10 verse 19. Uh, if you can turn your Bible to Hebrews 10, 19. So after talking about all about Jesus is greater, Jesus is that, Jesus is this, the author of Hebrews have come to Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19 and, and is telling us 
Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way. So the following Jesus is new and living way, open for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great high priest over the God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings and having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold fast. Let us hold unseveringly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. And, and let us consider how we may spur one another towards love and good deeds and not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Let's jump to verse 35. Let's jump to verse 35. So do not throw away your confidence. Verse 35. The author is, before he en enters into Hebrews 11, he's already giving us uh, faith value systems or faith, uh, uh, you know, quotes. Do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. <laughs> I'll read that one more time. So do not throw away your faith or confidence or trust. It will be richly rewarded. And verse 36, you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. For in a, in a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. Yes. And that verse is actually from Habakkuk. They were waiting for the Messiah. And the author of Hebrews is using the same verse after the resurrection of Jesus. And Jesus ascends to heaven. And then he's telling he's going to come back again. The Jesus or the Messiah who promised uh, will come. He already came. Now he'll come back again. And guess which verse he's using? He's using Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Uh, some of you are interested to know about that. You can go and read there. You will find the same verse. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse uh, 3 and 4. In a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. And, but, and he adds another verse from uh, uh, you know, I, Habakkuk chapter 2 and 2, 4. 2 and 4. And then, but my righteous one will live by faith. Look at that. He's quoting from Habakkuk and he's telling, my righteous one will live by faith and I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. So the righteous shall live by faith, coming from the Old Testament, how the ancients, how the people of the Old Testament lived. They lived by faith, waiting for the Messiah. And what is the commandment for you and for me, the New Testament believers? It's the same verse. The righteous one of Christianity, the righteous one of New Testament time, the righteous ones of the present time will live by faith. And, we, and, 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 and I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. And verse 39, then the author is adding to it. But we do not belong to those who shrink back. And are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. Look at that. He's looking at the church and telling, we do not shrink back. Like how some people in the Old Testament shrunk back or they didn't have faith. But they kept focusing on God and they put their faith in God. Then verse 11 is starting. So now you've got the background of uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Because when you stand on a pulpit and preach, no, you don't have time to do background study. You have to immediately jump into the sermon. You hardly have 35 minutes or 40 minutes. So now I got an opportunity to tell you there is a background for Hebrews 11. That is from Hebrews 10, that verses that we read. And now the author is telling, now he's defining what faith is. Look at that. Now... Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. I'm reading from NIV version. Some of you are holding King James version. Pastor Deepak, if you could put up the slide, uh, it will make a, a little understanding on uh, what the definition of faith. The first one is Greek, what is mentioned on that slide. Now faith, faith Greek is 
pistis, pistis, like pistachio, pistis. Now faith is the apostasis or the hypostasis of things hoped for and the elenchos of things not seen. <laughs> because these two words are very important. And in NIV and ESV versions, they translate it as faith is the assurance or the confidence of things hoped for. And it is the conviction of things not seen. King James Version and CEV Version translated as faith is a substance or reality of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. All the definitions are, why there is different translations? Because we cannot uh, you know, actually translate the Greek completely into English. We live in South and uh, some of you are from North and uh, some jokes, you can't translate it uh, word to word or, or the essence, you will lose it if you translate into your linguistic language. Come on somebody, or in English. From your linguistic language, if you convert it to uh, English, you can't. The same thing with Greek also. They try their level best to bring it down to English. And that's why different versions are there. American standard version. For Americans, uh, there is a standard version. Uh, we all follow King James and NIV. I personally follow NIV because I feel it is more uh, able to understand. Uh, but if, if some, sometimes you have to do a comparative study. I would say at least use one, two, three translation to understand the meaning of a text. The, the best way is use two, three language, two, three translations. And now that we are in a digital world, it's easy available. Just go Google it. You will get all the uh, different translations. It's, we are living in a beautiful time. Uh, we can compare, we can study. When you do, both are fine. Faith is the assurance or confidence of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. But, but I like actually the King James uh, version, even though I hold the NIV Bible, I love the King James version style. Faith is a substance. It is something that you can hold on to. It is a reality of things hoped for. And then the evidence of things not seen. It is, there is an evidence. There is a proof. It is not something, uh, some, some abstract. The Hebrews, the, the author is telling, many people believe it is Paul, but there is always a debate about it. That's why Hebrews, uh, book of Hebrews is not, it's a, the author is not known, some people say, but uh, but it doesn't matter to us. God is the one who helped us. Uh, God is the one who gave us the Bible. So I just believe it. <laughs> as simple as that. Uh, that is a different debate altogether. King James Version, uh, you know, a translation is, is really nice in, that, in this matter. Faith is a substance. It is something that you can hold on to. It is not something that I think. Or it is not just a feeling. It is a substance. Faith is an experience. Faith is a reality. When you walk with God, it is a reality. And those who have experienced it, you can't. Right now we are in summer. Those who have experienced summer, we always wait for what? Rain. Because we know if summer is there and summer very soon, what is going to come? Rain is going to come. We know it. It's an evidence. If summer is there, rain is going to happen. June, July, rain is coming. It's an evidence. Because we experienced it in the past. When summer comes, when there is, uh, you know, all this harvest of mangoes, mangoes are for sure. If mangoes are not coming, then I think Jesus is coming soon. So, so <laughs> you, I'm trying to convey some uh, message over here. Faith is like that. It's a substance. Faith is also a substance, a reality of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. And then, then it is going on, all right? It is not something of the mind. You can, you can uh, taste it. You can experience it. There is a reality to it. And then, wh why am I saying this? Because I'm trying to tell you that faith is not something in your head. Faith is not just a feeling. It is not a blind faith. You can experience it. You can see the evidence of it. Hallelujah. And then the author of Hebrew is actually going in a, in a fast track mode to cover all the people of the Old Testament as much as he can. He, he's going in a, in a super fast way 
to show that how faith was in the ancient time. Verse 2, if you're holding your Bible, you can read it for yourself. This is what the ancients were commended for or they were, uh, you know, they, they, they were uh, encouraged for or they were, uh, you know, applauded for. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, verse 3, we understand the universe was formed at the God's command so that what is seen was made out of what was invisible. It starts with God. <laughs> God spoke and he knew what he speaks will have result. So that's why we believe God's word has power, all right? If God speaks and there was creation, you and me holding God's word, guess what? It has power. It has, it has creatorial power. So that, that is another message altogether. Let me see if I can cover that, how we can declare by faith, how, how memorizing scriptures are so important. Uh, it helps you in your prayer life. That is how, a, that's how we practice uh, a faithful living. Then the first character is mentioned there. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. And then by faith, he had, was commended as righteous. When God spoke well of his offering and by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he's dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Your favorite scripture has come. It is in connection to Enoch. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Look at that scripture. It says, we don't know what Enoch did. He just walked with God. He just worshipped God. There was no church. There was no Bible. But he believed in God. He would have heard from Adam. Oh, you didn't know about that, right? Adam would have spoken to Enoch about the God that he met in Garden of Eden. He started putting faith and tried to experience that and started to walk. He, he heard from God just how God came down in Garden of Eden. God started to come and talk to Enoch. And that is what is mentioned there. The details are not given. He didn't have the Bible. He didn't have Bethelaji Church. He, he didn't have a community like Zoom here. But he walked with God because some of us have an understanding that these are some measures and standards of following Jesus or following God. It is your personal relationship with Christ Jesus. And I just want to let you know that faith is all about your personal relationship, faith in action. Every family is different, right? Every family has their own dynamics. Every experience is different. So you can't compare one family with another family. There are some uh, principles. There are some standards. Yes. But the experience of one family, what happens in one home is different from what happens in another home. Even if both are good families. So walking with God is like that. Your walk with God is very personal. But it is not something that you just think. There is action involved. That is what, uh, you know, the author of Hebrew is telling. It is a substance. It is not just something that you think or have confidence and have goosebumps. Or, no, faith leads to obedience and action. That's what you read there, right? The two characters that you read right now, Abel and Enoch, they worshipped. They gave offering to God. They started praying. They started walking with God. They didn't do a great conference. They didn't do any great battle. They did not become king. They did not become successful. Like how we measure uh, the blessings of God. Look at, look at them. Abel worshipped God. And he worshipped by faith. And it was, it was commented to him as righteousness. He was declared righteous. Because he lived by faith. Enoch. He didn't do anything. He just walked with God. He just worshipped God in the understanding that he had. But there was an action involved and God took him off. <laughs> he did not experience death. It's very clearly mentioned there. 
And verse 6 is saying, it, without faith, it is impossible to please God. That means this faith is all about not something that you think, but walking with God, partnering with God. So that is that word I, I want to let you know. Just let, let, it, that, let that sink into your head. You have to partner with God. We will talk about that in the coming class. Verse 7, let's go fast. By faith, Noah, he had to do something. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. Look at that. Noah experience with God is building an ark. <laughs> he heard from God and he built an ark to save from the flood. This is what I want to let you know. See, he had to do something. Each one had to do something. It is all about partnering with, you can't compare. So you can't imagine if Abel, Enoch and Noah were all together, okay? And they're talking like how we talk in the church. Abel will say, I worship God. Enoch will say, I walked with God. Noah will say, you guys are not doing anything. I built an ark for God. Who is the smarter? Who is the greatest? <laughs> who has more faith? We, we have this kind of comparative study, right? We have this kind of com comparison. And, and we feel that. And, and imagine if you and me are uh, uh, able. Able will go home and think, hey, I also should build one, build one ark. <laughs> you failed. If, imagine if Enoch is like, I should be like Abel and uh, Noah. I also should build an altar and do that. I also should do this. No, it is your personal walk with God. But you better walk with God. Many people only think, they only listen, they only hear, but they don't make any action. They don't move with God. We will talk about how to move with God, how to practically put your faith in action. Most probably I might do it tomorrow or the next week, or not next week, uh, two days from now. I, I've been led by the Holy Spirit. I, I want to tell you, I planned a lot of things, but as the class is going, I'm changing my topics also. So I'm also free because I'm partnering with God. You know, I'm cutting a lot of topics here and there. It is your personal walk with God. Thank you for that. What is that, Bala? That sending message to everyone. <laughs> Let's go on. Then verse uh, 8, verse 8 to verse 19, verse 8 to verse 19, it's a long chunk, chunk of uh, passages or verses talking about Abraham and Sarah, all right? I'm going to read verse 8 only and last verse, that's all. We have no time and maybe one more verse in between. By faith, Abraham... Look at that. When called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed. <laughs> Left everything and he obeyed and went. Even though he did not know where he was going. He didn't have GPS. He had no clue. Somehow God convinced him that this is, this is what I'm going to give you, Abraham. Leave your country. Leave your idol-making business. Leave your father's house. I am the living God. God appeared to Abraham or he heard a voice. But he was very sure it is almighty God because he knows other gods. <laughs> because he was an idol maker. He knows, he knows other gods. He knew this is the almighty God speaking. And by faith, he started following. See, faith is linked with actions. All through this scriptures, even though we started Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is the assurance or the faith is the confidence or faith is the evidence. We read that verse in different versions, but actually faith is not just a feeling in your head or a, a, just a thought. It is all about action. Interesting, right? It should have been written like by faith, Abraham heard from God and he enjoyed hearing more and more from God and didn't do nothing. He just kept worshiping. It should have been something like that. No, when he heard from God and he knew God had good plans for him, I'm going to bless you. If you want to know the background of this, you have to read Genesis 12, Genesis 15, Genesis 19. 
step by step god appeared two three times to him and said i'm going to bless you and you, you your generation will be like a the inheritance is going to be like uh, the 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 stars in the sky your children are going to be like the stars in the sky and 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 this 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 particles on the sand on, on the seashore it's going to be like that it's going to be mighty and then he obeyed and went look at that even though he did not know where he was going he had full doubts also he didn't know where he was going he was confused but he had faith that god who called him is faithful verse 9 by faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in the foreign country oh my god he walked all the way from ur of chaldeans went all the way to the place of the present israel the larger portion of the the, the present nation of israel and he went and put tent there and stayed already there are people staying there already people are asking questions to abraham why are you here why you came is only answer is god said he will give give this land did god give the land no it only later god gave the land <laughs> moses was the one who went with israel and, and conquered joshua is the one who conquered the land and was there there was a time gap but look at the faith of abram even though he didn't see the result he went and pitched the tent look at that is what is following god people might call you crazy people might call you but if you really heard from god and it was genuine voice of god and you did the reasoning and you understood and because of your relationship with god you know it for sure people will call you crazy don't worry and then verse 9 by faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country he lived in tent as did isaac and jacob who were heirs with him of the same promise for he was looking forward for the city with foundations whose architect and builder is god they were looking for the kingdom of god they knew god will establish the kingdom and verse 11 not much of uh, things about sarah in in the genesis but here you'll get an insight about sarah's faith also and by faith even sarah who was a uh, past childbearing age was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise oh man that is beautiful let's go on no time was 19 abraham reasoned that god could even raise okay to understand that you have to read from verse 17 onwards by faith abraham when god tested him offered isaac as a sacrifice he who had embraced the promise was about to sacrifice the one and the only son even though god had said to him it is through isaac that your offspring will be reckoned was 19 abraham reasoned that god could even raise the dead and so in a manner of speaking he did receive isaac back from death one thing caught my attention is the word reasoned abraham reasoned thought through when god told him to sacrifice his only son it was a test anyway is he just it was a test of uh, faith love it was he wanted to really check maybe abraham would have uh, gone away from the lord for some time after seeing the child he was spending more time with the child than with god earlier it was he and god talking 25 years of walking with god maybe i'm just guessing abraham would have got backslidden a little bit god be see with hagar and uh, <laughs> god be see with uh, sarah and god be see with isaac god be see with household things and to get his attention maybe it's a test of love actually a test of love and our god is not a god who will ask for human sacrifices please don't quote him for that it is just a test it is also a test to a pointer towards our lord jesus christ where is the where the heavenly father will give his very own son jesus christ he wanted to see if abraham will do it he wanted to see if abraham a man of faith will ever do it and i'm sure god was shocked maybe i'm just i'm just if if, if i was god i was like man this guy has faith 
This guy has real faith. Abraham, that's why he's called as the father of faith. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and that's why this many verses are given for Abraham. <laughs> the author has given justice for writing Hebrews 11 from verse 8 till verse 19. The author is exp you know, explaining about Abraham's faith because he went the extra mile. He went crazy with God and God is like amazed. Just like Jesus was amazed with some of people, uh, some of the people's faith, he looked at them and said, man, you have great faith. Oh man, Syrophoenician woman, you have great faith, lady. I never expected that. I thought some Jewish people will have faith like this. But the centurion guy, Jesus had a shock of his life. Wow, you have great faith. You don't want me to come home. I'm willing to come home. And you're saying, don't come home. You say the word, man, you have really understood something about my kingdom. And, and, and God was excited. Great faith. And I'm sure the same thing would have happened with Abraham. Man, you have great faith. But how did, this is not blind faith. Abraham reasoned, look at that word. I don't know what is that in King James Version. I didn't get time to check. But in NIV, it says recent. Abraham thought through. He thought through. How can, I, how can a God tell like this? How, 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 can, how can God uh, tell me to sacrifice my own son? Is, is it even right? What is going on? The God who called me, he, he promised that I will have a son. And I'm, at the old age, he did a miracle. And I, I'm... I'm, and I'm uh, accounting, someone said accounting. Yeah, he, he did an accounting. He did an audit. Did I hear the voice of God correctly? Uh, did, I, did, did, I, did I hear God's voice correctly? Then, then he came to a conclusion. Oh, my God is able to raise Isaac. Even if I, even if I destroy uh, or, or kill my own son, even if I make a mistake or even if I, even if I uh, heard it right, he believed God could even raise the dead. He believed in the resurrection. God is powerful. And so in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death to the point of death. Look at that. He, Abraham believed God. But at the same time, he reasoned. It is not a blind faith. With, with, he, he did an audit of his experience from the Ur of Chaldeans. Till the point of uh, verse 19, he did an audit, he did an accounting, he reasoned, and he believed God, trusted God. He gave his life and partnered with God. And God said, Abraham, you are the father of faith. <laughs> I'm going to establish you as a father of faith. By faith, Isaac, next one. Now we have to rush. Then another, another one, his grandson, uh, Isaac, Jacob. By faith. They all walked by faith. By faith, Joseph. Wow. He, he, he is a prophet, actually. He started off with dreams and visions, but ended up as a prophet. That's what is mentioned over there. He told his ch grandchildren or children, uh, very soon we will come out of Egypt. So take my bones also. It will happen in the later time. It will happen in God's time. Some of us are upset when things don't happen in our time. Have faith in God. Trust the timing of God. Hallelujah. Just trust God with his timing, with his plans. Just trust God. You partner with God. Look at Moses. Uh, Moses is another uh, 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 great character. So more verses are dedicated for him also. After Abraham, more verses are dedicated for Moses. By faith, Moses. By faith, Moses. Again, you will find verse 24. I'm just rushing. There's no time. Verse 29, you will find, by faith, Israel, the people of Israel, uh, passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. And then Egyptian tried to do so. They were drowned. They passed through the, the people of Israel passed through the Red Sea, not by their, uh, you know, a great scientific explanation or <laughs> they passed through Red Sea uh, because of faith. Because Moses had faith. They trusted the leader and the people also had faith. And then you will find verse 31, another character there. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. 
If you look at the list of this uh, first 12, so Pasadipak, if you can put that first slide, I categorized the whole of Hebrews chapter 11 into three categories of groups of people. Uh, just to make it interesting, I made it 12, 12, 12. Uh, the first list of people is mentioned in Hebrews 11, 3 to 31. Uh, I just put God also there just to complete that, uh, you know, that equation of 12. This, this, is not, this, 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 this is something that I do for fun, all right? Uh, there is no uh, scriptural backup or anything. Just help us to make understand things better. So I put uh, three, you know, three categories. First list of people mentioned by this, the author is God, Abel, Enoch, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, people of Israel, and Rahab. If you look at this list, not all of them were holy except God. <laughs> the reason I put God is because he also acted by faith. He also moved by faith. Uh, Rahab is a prostitute. People of Israel, I'm, I'm starting from the bottom. Uh, Rahab is a prostitute. Uh, people of Israel, they are more the grum grumbly type, uh, irritated type, the complaining type. Then you have Moses. He is, he is a solid murderer. Joseph is the only good one, I think, in that. But he landed up in Egypt. Uh, what to do? Jacob, his name itself is called as a cheat. Isaac, he's a liar. Just like Father Abraham. He, generational curse you will find there. Abra, from Abraham, he, Abraham was a liar. He lied two or three times. Same thing Isaac also learned. And you, you'll find Abraham, Isaac. And by the time it became Jacob, he's become a full-fledged liar and a cheat. So that is something to do with generational curse. Uh, and in Jesus, all this generational curse can be broken also. But you just have to identify if that is passing in and through uh, your uh, family or generation. But that is very true, right? You will find that Abraham is a liar. Isaac also lied same way. And then uh, Jacob becomes the liar. Noah, you thought he is such a holy guy. He's a drunkard and something nasty things he did with his own family. I don't want to mention. It's not worth mentioning. The list, the list. If, if you look into your Bible, some of the Bibles have titles on top. It says Heroes of Faith, Hall of Fame. I'm sure you would have read some um, and, and the messages people talk about it. They are the, they are the heroes of faith. Yes, but God uses uh, people of faith and God picks up weak people to confound the wise. When you partner with God, uh, you know, it's called a synergy, right? You, you partner with God and, and you believe God and God can work in and through you. Whether your past is bad, you have a blessed future with God when you partner with God. So look at that list and uh, you can place yourself in that list. Another list I, I just quickly mentioned because of the want of time. Uh, the second list of people that is mentioned over there, uh, Pastor Deepak, you can put that. It says, uh, uh, that also I made 112. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32 to 35. Gideon, Barak, they are the judges. Samson, another judge. Samson, you know, right? The hairy guy. And then uh, Jephthah. You, you may not have heard about Jephthah. David, David, all of you know. Samuel, you know. Then the rest of the prophets. Then, then the Bible is not mentioning names. Quickly, uh, it is going to, uh, because I think he ran out of names. He wanted to finish writing the book of Hebrews fast, I think. Who shut the mouth of lions. And I'm sure it is Daniel. Who quenched the fury of flames. It could be Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Who escaped the edge of the sword. Uh, it, it, I don't know who that is, but uh, maybe who escaped the edge, maybe the protection uh, of God. Somebody was protected by God through faith. Who are powerful in battle, even though they were weak. David was a classic example of that. Uh, then there, there's a mention of some woman received back their dead. That's the second list. That is mentioned. That is quickly mentioned. Not much of details is given. But all of them acted by faith. And they received. They could see results 
in partnering with God. Gideon was fearful. Barak was fearful because the neighboring countries were coming to capture them. They just call out to God. Samson had the anointing of God. Uh, David worshipped God, partnered with God. Uh, Samuel always heard from God. And the prophets all throughout, they, they brought love and mercy, not just judgment over the people. They always came to warn people, get back to God, get back to God. And then, who shut up? Daniel. Look at how, how Daniel was brought through. Shadrach, Meshach, and brought through. You will find all of these, uh, uh, you know, people, the prophets, that, uh, Elisha and Elijah, all of them are mentioned there. There is another list. So many people can be put into that. I somehow believe that there could be more uh, uh, people uh, who, who, who escaped like Daniel, who escaped like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Because we preachers have made them famous, all right? <laughs> we pastors have made, because that is the favorite story of everyone. We can talk about that story hundred times. David's story. Third list of people mentioned is a slightly depressing list. No preachers talks about it. It only happens in Bible study like this. This is the basic, uh, this, this I'm giving you the list to help us understand the fullness of faith in God. All these three categories of people, they had faith in God. And they were, and the book of Hebrew, the author says, they were commended for their faith. They were applauded for their faith. They were, uh, uh, people looked at them and said, they have a special joy. They have something from God. They were commended for their faith. That's what the Bible is talking about. And guess what? The first century Christians in the midst of persecution, more people started to join this new movement of Christianity, not because of if they had a good church or they had a, a great, uh, you know, uh, uh, blessings from God. It's not because of all that. They started joining, yes, the work of the Holy Spirit. Yes, God used the apostles. Yes, there is a move of uh, the community coming together. Praise God for all that. But guess what? The people had joy because they partnered with God. Even in the little, they were able to worship God. Even in the little, they were able to share with others. And they had unusual generosity. They had unusual faith in God. They had joy in the midst of persecution and negativity. These people of faith, they, they worshiped God. They loved God. And they love people around. And guess what? Romans started joining this group called Christians. We want to follow these guys. With all our riches, with all our uh, uh, you know, Roman empire, the kingdom, it all looks good. But there is no joy. There is no hope. There is no peace. But these guys are so peaceful. Because guess what? The secret recipe is they partnered with God. Not just believe in God. Not just have faith in God. They partnered with God. Hallelujah. So... Look at the three list. Majority of them received miracle from God. And there's a, a, small, a small minority that were tortured. They were insulted. They were flogged. They were chained, imprisoned, stoned to death. Some sword in two. Some killed by sword. Some of them were roaming about, hiding from people. Some were destitute like beggars. Some were persecuted. Some were wandering in deserts and mountains. Man, very, uh, uh, what do you call, depressing list. And then, verse 39. It says, they were all commented for their faith. What does it say in uh, King James Version? They were all applauded for faith. Yet, none of them received what they had been promised. Since God had planned something better for us. So that only together with us would they be made perfect. See, God's plan cannot be restricted just on the planet Earth. We are here partnering with God. And we are going to partner with God in eternity. This is just a training ground for all of us. To partner with God. We are not partnering with God just for blessings or just for success. 
just for uh, that and this, just to get a job, just to get a, 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 some money and good future. Praise God for all that. He will provide that. Definitely. God is a God who blesses. I believe that. He is our shepherd and we shall lack nothing. I, I trust that. But sometimes we go through seasons of troubles, seasons of difficulty. At that time also, the same faith that you had when you trusted God for success, faith shouldn't go down. Trust in God shouldn't go down. It should be the same. Why? Because you are one with Christ. You, you, you are one with Christ here and you will have a better reward and resurrection in the eternity above. Your life is not going to end just on the planet Earth. It's going to go beyond. It's going to go beyond. Hallelujah. So that's why all the people over the, the people of faith that is mentioned over here, majority received a blessing and miracle. There's a smaller minority that, that they didn't receive anything. Even, even if it's Abraham, God told him that uh, you will you will be like the stars in the sky and but he had only, he saw only Isaac. <laughs> he saw only Isaac. That's it. But he trusted God. He saw only a portion of land that he went and stayed in the promised land. That's it. But God is a God who works through generation. If he promised something, he will fulfill it. Hallelujah. He's a God who is everlasting God. That's what we sang in the beginning of this session. He's an everlasting God. And one more verse and I'm done. Verse 35. I like that. Uh, the woman raised, verse 35. The women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain even a better resurrection. Listen up. If you got your rewards here, if you got your blessings here, I wonder you might, uh, you will all have resurrection. But those who didn't receive a, a, a miracle here, if you didn't receive a, a, a blessing over here uh, and you still had faith, guess what? You will have a better resurrection. You will have a better reward in heaven. That's what the Bible is telling. <laughs> and the one who promised will give it to you. And that's why that is, this is one depressing thing for me, actually, because many people, uh, many of us, we get the limelight, uh, people acknowledge us and uh, they, they reward us that God's blessing is there. All that is there. Sometimes I scratch my head. Will I have lesser rewards in heaven? Because many people who, who didn't receive anything over here, the priority list goes for them. But praise God, we all have resurrection. That is something. We are one with Christ Jesus. That's going to be a beautiful experience. Only on the earth, I have this kind of jealousy kind of thing that works in my mind. Oh, I might miss something. That's because I'm still in the flesh. Once I reach heaven, I was like, Are, made it. <laughs> I'm in heaven about God, God, the one who promised he's faithful. You will forget about all your doubt, worry, gossip, comparison, all that you will forget. You are with God. In that unity of Trinity, God, God welcomes you and say, good and faithful servant. So let not our eyes be fixed on the things that is temporal. That is what Hebrews is telling. Faith must have an eternal perspective. Because that is better. That is greater. God will work in and through our life. But partner with God. Let God's plans fulfill over our life. You don't have to compare your life with someone else. It's good to do that to you know, get some principles uh, and things like that. But don't become like somebody else. You become more like Christ Jesus. That is your focus. Because the next verse, that is chapter 12. We'll talk about it in ne the next class. My time's up. Uh, because our focus is to become like Jesus. Because he is the author and finisher of our faith. Let's look to God in prayer. Wow. The last slide I want to quickly discuss. It's an yes and no uh, questions. You can answer it over there itself. Don't, no need to uh, you know, switch on your mic. But you can answer it there itself. Can we trust God and see God's miracles? Yes or no? Yeah. 
can we trust god and still go through some troubles yes we can but, but the jesus himself said that uh, we will uh, have trouble in this world but jesus said i have overcome the world trust me you will also overcome can we trust god and still have some doubts <laughs> yeah you can have doubts but don't don't dwell on the doubts for for so long you know just like abraham reasoned and uh, believe that god is able so come to the, your conclusion point or the concluding point should be it should land in god not in your doubt it should land in faith you can have doubt but don't dwell in doubt reason and study the bible think through what god is working in and through you how god is working in in and through you partner with god and shift your doubt to faith just like thomas did just like peter did they all had their own doubts next one the greatest doubt that uh, the person that had was mother mary herself she uh, she looked at the angel and how is it possible it's unbelievable i'm not even married and i'm going to have a child doubt is there come on but then, then she concluded that a conversation with the angel said let his will be done i am a vessel in the hand of god see that is faith <laughs> can we trust god and still have some unanswered prayers of course definitely but that shouldn't quench your faith that shouldn't uh, bring depression don't have depressive faith david prayed and the child died did he go through depression david got up and said i will go and meet the child in heaven very soon he had that confidence of resurrection when there are unanswered prayer when there are uh, things that god didn't come through god has greater plans there might be a better resurrection there might be a better reward at this point of our perspective in this side of life we may not be able to understand everything but when we see him face to face all our answers will get solved can we trust god and receive rewards and resurrections of course it's a big yes yes that's what we need to trust god see see i i changed the whole thing from faith to trusting god for because of our bible study all right so that this this need not be a standard uh, i actually wrote all the questions as can we have faith in god can we have can we believe in god and see miracles but i changed everything because we need to align ourselves to the bible study that is trust trust is what handing over your life to god and say I, i partner with you lord i trust you and that is what faith is all about let's pray heavenly father we just want to thank you lord for tonight thank you for teaching us from the book of hebrews and to show that you have a way of working in and through each one in a very peculiar and a very special way in a very personal way that you have a way of working oh god and thank you for partnering with us while we were yet sinners your love came in search of us and we thank you for dying for our sins and thank you for you you were willing to even partner with us who who are we we are so feeble we are weak we are distracted most of the time lord but you decided to work with us and we just want to thank you we just want to thank you tonight a heartfelt thanks to you god because of who you are in our life and you decided to work in and through us thank you lord our prayer tonight oh god that your kingdom will come your will be done over each one of our lives have your way do your work in each one of our life we believe oh god that as we learn today that each one's life is so unique and it is so special in your eyes and everyone has got a different plan and purpose help us oh god to see your kingdom in each one of our life to fulfill that purpose help us to have a vision help us our eyes to be fixed on you alone that we will become more like you thank you lord for partnering with us it's such a privilege we love you tonight in jesus mighty name we pray amen thank you pastor